I'm Steve Carter. In this video I'm going to be talking about two software programs that I use for organizing my writing. One is Freeplane, and that's what you're looking at here. This is a uh, mind mapping software. This is uh, free and open source, runs on Windows. The other program, there is a free trial version, but there's a very inexpensive uh, commercial version available, and that is Scrivener. And this one is a writing tool where the other one I use as a as an organizing as a note organizer, basically. So uh, what I'm going to be talking about here is uh, organizing notes for a novel, but the approach that I take here should be applicable to uh, small writing projects like a short story. Uh, and nonfiction projects like a magazine article or a business proposal. Uh, this project is All Cars Run to Park Street, and that's the name of the novel. And I started taking notes uh, for this novel, as you can see, uh, in 1972. And uh, in 1972, I was taking notes in a paper journal. In the mid-80s, I got a computer, and I started taking notes both on the computer and in paper journals. And that's continued to the present day. Sometimes I write on paper and sometimes on the computer. Uh, what I have done, though, is go through my journals, my paper journals, and mark and type in all of the uh, entries that I think I might use for writing or for teaching or for research. And uh, so I have um, uh, I have a series of uh, text files on my computer uh, with uh, very expressive names like J7207 and just means it's a journal that I started in uh, July of 1972. So what I did was go to the directory where I keep all my journal files. Uh, they're all uh, simple text files and uh, copy the names of all of those files, uh, drop them into free plane and split them into nodes so every file name has a node. Uh, these green check marks were not there. Um, then I went through each journal and took out the, uh, the relevant um, text passages for this project. And as I got all of them out of a journal, I checked it off and I moved on to the next one. Uh, and so, for example, when I was going through that first journal, I'm going to expand this major characters. Uh, my, one of my major characters is Jim, and one of the first entries that I had made in my journals was this entry about Jim walking through the Boston Common. Now, if I hit a key here, it'll open up the text editor within Freeplane, and I just copied out of my uh, journal file and into this text editor, because I want to get all of the material into one, one place, all of the notes into one place. Uh, you can see, for example, that I uh, I had this uh, key, star star Park Street, was just a way to search, the, when I'm searching through the journals, to be able to find things that uh, relate to Park Street. And uh, what I found, an entry about Eva, for example. Uh, here's the first entry about Eva, and there's that same key. And I just copied it out of my journal and put it into this uh, text area. When I added a note later with the I made sure that I put it in with a current date so I would know what's, what are new notes and what are old notes. Um, so that's the way that I got materials out of all of these files and into this file. I'm going to close the text area now just to unclutter the screen a little bit. And now I'm going to expand this node and expand all of the child nodes. And you'll see that there is quite a bit of information here. Uh, some of it is pretty well organized, major characters, minor characters, and then broken out under each one. Uh, and some of it is just dumped into an area called miscellaneous, and then I started to organize that a little bit into scenes. But the great thing about a mind map is you can always reorganize later. You can drag and drop and uh, change the hierarchy and move things around and do all kinds of things to organize this. So the main thing is to get the data in there and get your mind working on it. And uh, while I was doing all of that, I was continuing to take notes and to, uh, to brainstorm. So I st started another file uh, called All Cars Run to Park Street Notes. And once again, I have major characters and minor characters and 
places to put research and so forth. So this is where my ongoing research goes. Um, so once I completed getting things out of my notebooks, uh, I kind of closed this file down and started working in, in this file. So that means there's two places I have to go to look for certain things, uh, but you'll see that this tool makes it pretty easy to find things. So I want to show you some of the features here that I use that help organize my notes. So we'll look at uh, this file here. And um, we'll look at major characters. Kenny is my major character, Kenny. And uh, here's a note from my, my journals, Hemorrhoids the Duck. Uh, in the book, I had an idea that uh, Kenny would uh, have an idea to buy a duck and name it hemorrhoids. Uh, this little scene is actually based on a scene from real life. Um, and so that was one of the first pieces of text that I incorporated into Scrivener. So I copied that from my notes into Scrivener, and this is the actual manuscript. So if I come up here and say duck, um, it narrows it it filters, much like the other program did, and it narrows it down and finds there's my duck entry. So this is the, this is where I'm starting to expand on that, um, uh, that idea that I had and turn it into a scene. And as you can see, Scrivener allows me to organize things by, by chapters, by characters, by places, and so forth. So I'm adding another layer of organization. This is the actual manuscript while it, this, these are the notes that I'll be mining for that. Uh, another notation I use here is this X. Uh, these are just graphics that you can grab from over here and apply to your node. And uh, um, you notice that I had used X uh, green check marks over here, and I also used them here, and I realized I'm not going to remember what they mean. So I started another little file where I did Park Street project notes, where I make notes every day on uh, how I'm going about working on this. Uh, and this was a good place to drop this little reminder that icons in notes, the green means that the note has been incorporated into the manuscript, while the red X means it's cut. It's not going to be used. So these things about Kenny I'm not going to use. Uh, another icon that I use is this magnifying glass. And that one I can remember easily. That means I need to do more research on this. Uh, I also have this books icon. Now, if I, here's the books icon. If I had trouble finding a node that had the books icon, I can search for it up here. I can say, show me icon that contains the books. And then I can filter, and it'll narrow it down just to those, just to those nodes. Then I can clear the filter. So this icon allows me, there's a little bit of scripting going on here but it allows me to hit a key on the keyboard and go directly to the document. This is, the, uh, this is a, uh, an e-book of The Iron Heel by Jack London. And this program allows me to put in a little script that will go out and open that. So here's the e-book. And uh, if I want to go through here and copy and paste, or I may have made notes in here or whatever. So it's a way to link my notes to the actual text that they came from. And now we'll come over to the more current file, and I'll expand. I'll select this main root node, and I'll expand that. And as you can see, it's very complex. But the mind map allows me to search it and organize it uh, very easily. Uh, for example, I have some images that I want to use um, as kind of triggers to uh, remind me of what certain scenes look like. So if I want to look for, uh, I put this little icon on nodes that have an image. So if I filter the, to that, uh, I get just the nodes that have images and their parents. Um, so this node has an image. And if I click this, it opens a little thumbnail of the image. And this is the Tremont Street subway. And if I click on that, I can get a larger view of the image. It just opens up my image viewer. And I can zoom in. Oh, oh yes, now I remember what that looks like. Uh, so that's the images. I'm going to clear that filter. Um, there are also a lot of these pink arrows that you'll see, and there are several kinds of uh, these these arrows. They're link arrows. 
Uh, one type of arrow is a link to the web. Now I know that I have one for uh, the Greek god Anubis. So I'm going to search for the first reference to Anubis. And here it is over here. So this is under miscellaneous notes, Anubis. And uh, this has some notes associated with it, something I read in a book or whatever. Uh, but there are other references to Anubis. If I look for the next one, there's another one over here, and this is under the major character's curbstone. Uh, curbstone is a dog who is a major character in this story, uh, and he's based on the the Greek, the the dog in Greek mythology, Kerberos. Uh, so there's a lot of um, a Greek mythology behind this, and Anubis uh, is a god, a Greek god. Uh, who is a reincarnation of the Egyptian god Thoth. And so I want to be able to link this reference to Anubis with the other one. And so I put in this little node called C also and then give it some children just a to, to place to put a link. And this program allows me to link this node to this node. So when I click here, it takes me to that node. When I click here, it takes me to the other node. So it's a good way to create cross-references. And as I said, Anubis is actually... Uh, developed from the Egyptian god Thoth, and so I have a reference to Thoth in here, and that will take me to, to that reference of Thoth, and there's more information available there. Um, and this, uh, this link right here uh, is, as you can see, let me click on that, and then come down here and zoom in. You can see it's an HTTP link, so it's a web link. So if I click on that, it's going to take me, it's going to open my web browser and take me to a page. I simply copied this URL into my, uh, there's a way to copy it and make it a link here. So whenever I click that, it will always take me back to this page. I don't have to go look it up. It just gets me there automatically. So there are web links, there are local links, and there's one other kind of link called a file link. Um, I know I have one, for example, about... Uh, the opera Orfeo, if I can remember how to spell it. Uh, go to that. Okay, here's Orfeo by Monteverdi. Um, my book is based on the Orpheus myth, and uh, that's why it has so many Greek gods in it. And um, Orfeo is about the Orpheus. It's an opera about the Orpheus myth. And there is a copy of the libretto online, but if I'm not online and I want to look at the libretto, I want to have a local copy. So I just made a PDF of it. And this link, as you'll see from down here, is to a file on my hard drive. So when I click on that, rather than go to the web, it will open that PDF on my hard drive. And there's the libretto to Orfeo. So those are the different kinds of uh, links that you can have. And it really helps to organize uh, your notes. Now, once I move the text and start working on it in my manuscript, I will sometimes um, want to get back to my notes and, and link the manuscript back to my notes. And one way I can do that is to create a link to the mind map file. And I know the mind map files end in .mm. So if I filter to just things that contain a .mm, then this filters uh, to to nodes over here that have references back to the mind map. Uh, you'll see how this works in a second. Um, here, for example, is a, a scene about a character named Wednesday Jones. And I have some notes about Wednesday Jones in my, uh, in my notes. And that's what this is based on. This, this particular scene is based on those notes. And if I want to get back to the notes, what I did was to take a node uh, I won't go to the particular node in question right now, but you just take a node and you copy the the node URI, which is it's not exactly a web address, but it's similar to a web URL, and then um, then you can paste it in here and you get this link. Now you notice that it ends with this strange ID. So what I'm going to do is copy that ID. It's a, this is a little bit tricky, but uh, once you get used to it, it works very well. Now when I click on this link, it's going to take me back to the appropriate, um, my Park Street notes file, but it didn't take me to the appropriate node. 
To get there, I have to navigate, go to Node with ID, and I paste in that ID. And here's my Wednesday Jones. I'm a librarian. So these notes here, where I had the idea of Wednesday Jones saying, I'm a librarian, uh, became the basis of this scene. And in here, you'll see there's the I'm a librarian in this, in this scene. So I built this scene based on that idea. And I can always get back to my notes uh, this way. Okay, well, that really just scratches the surface of uh, using a mind map and this Scrivener. And I'll be making more videos uh, going into detail about how to do some of these things that I've shown you. But I hope that this has uh, spurred your interest in using this software uh, to do some writing. And uh, if you uh, have questions or comments, you can email me at scarter at frogstoryrecords.com.